Hello, my fellow comic book collectors. It's Alan, the Comic Collector Geek, and this is the Friday Challenge. Um, and this one's actually a bit dedicated to my good friend Night Tiger Comics. Um, on the weekend, we did a show uh, where we were showing 80s comics. Um, so I thought, hey, that'd make a perfect Friday Challenge. So I'm going to show my 10 biggest Copper Age keys, which are books from the 80s to 1980 to 1989. So we're going to start out with one of my favorite books. <laughs> I know this one might seem a little lame, but it, for me it's very nostalgic for me uh, from, the 90s, uh, from the 80s. It's Smurfs number one. Now prior to this, uh, Smurfs was actually in a magazine. It was in a magazine comic called Spiro. From, uh, it was from France and Belgium. And uh, yeah, this is the first comic appearance of the Smurfs. Um, they hadn't been, they were always in a magazine format before this. So this is the first comic appearance. And it's just a cool book. <laughs> I, I always liked the Smurfs. I was a big fan of the Smurfs in the 80s. And this is their first appearance. So that's my first book. Uh, my next one is one that actually I enjoyed the movie. Most people did not enjoy this movie, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good movie, and I thought it was underrated. And I really liked the character in the movie um, uh, that was, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, 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 the one with the dragon. <laughs> I'm blanking on her name. Uh, Ileana Rasputin. Um, really liked her in the movie. Um, and, um, Magic is her character. I was trying to remember the character name. <laughs> For some reason, I couldn't remember her name. Um, and she made, uh, well, the New Mutants made their first appearance in this book. Actually, she made her first appearance, I think she was a baby, though, was in Giant Size X-Men. Um, but this is the first appearance of the New Mutants, and it was a good movie. I thought it was, it was actually interesting. So, um, yeah. Tell me in the comments below if, if you liked the New Mutants movie. I did. I enjoyed it. I thought it was okay. I'm, I'm a little bit partial towards uh, uh, comic movies. So, uh, so yeah, this is uh, Marvel Graphic Novel number four, first appearance of the New Mutants. And this is from 1982. Okay. Next on my list is another really cool character. I hope they do something with this character. There's been sort of hints that they're going to do something with this character. If you look at the very end of Loki, uh, they actually show um, a statue of this character. And so I'm hoping something will happen with this character because it's a very cool character. And it's Beta Ray Bill. Beta Ray Bill, uh, this is his first appearance in Thor uh, 370, uh, 337, I should say. And... Uh, it's a great one. It's a great cover. He's smashing the Thor. <laughs> and it's where he gets Thor's hammer. So that's it's really cool that he can wield it because he is such a virtuous guy. Uh, so yeah, Beta Ray Bill. Very cool comic. Next on my list is another... I love quirky characters. And this character, they've tried so many times to make a good show about this character. And they're actually not bad shows. They just never perform well. Uh, is The Tick. Um, this is uh, the first appearance of The Tick, and when they did this, um, they released it as a special edition, okay? And I think they printed like 5,000 copies, and each are numbered inside. So this one says, uh, manufactured with number 3,353, printed on the interior front cover. So each, each print would have like a, what number it was on in terms of the edition. As I said, they printed 5,000 copies. Um, and you know, it's a quite hard book to get, actually. <laughs> so I was quite happy to get this one. And it has white pages as well. So this is a uh, first appearance of The Tick in comics. Back cover pinup. Mac trail backup story uh, by Dodds Rod. And that's the backup pinup. Let's see. Maybe this is like... So these are all the major Tick characters, all the... I mean, that's his, I think that's his friend right there. Right, right there. That's his main, uh, like, uh, sidekick. Yeah, so uh, just a cool character I really enjoyed. I actually enjoyed the TV series. Um, 
Yeah, as I said, I'm partial. <laughs> partial to comic stories. Okay, so um, then we got another cool character that I'm hoping they're going to do something with again. Uh, this is the Hobgoblin, and this is the first appearance of the Hobgoblin. Uh, and uh, this is um, Amazing Spider-Man 238. Uh, this one comes with the tattoos, so uh, that's extra special for it. A, a lot of them will have green labels because uh, there was tattoos that were included and a lot of kids would take those tattoos out and <laughs> tattoo themselves. So uh, they were temporary tattoos, obviously. Obviously, So uh, just really cool one. I think this is actually a newsstand as well. Looks like a newsstand. I think they might have been mostly newsstands back then, but uh, just a cool book, um, cool character. Uh, the character uh, is really Ned Leeds which is Superman's friend and they kind of jokingly uh, hint at the fact that he could become the next um, hobgoblin or will become the hobgoblin because it's like oh I'd never I'd never do anything to you spider-man <laughs> you know I always want to be on your side <laughs> and it's sort of uh, hinting that maybe he'll turn evil so uh, yeah this is amazing spider-man uh, 238 great book okay Next one is another Amazing Spider-Man. And this is Amazing Spider-Man 300. Probably the most iconic cover, I would say, from the 80s. Um, just everybody loves this cover. It's been homaged a billion times. <laughs> like, uh, it seems like every time I go to the comic store, there's a new homage to this book. Uh, so this is uh, a book that I actually had twice in my collection. This is my second copy. My first copy I sold for 50 bucks. <laughs> it was high grade, much higher grade than this one. Um, but uh, yeah, my wife got me to sell my comics, so I sold sold it really cheap. So uh, this is Amazing Spider-Man 300, the first appearance of Venom, or for, first full appearance. He actually makes an appearance at the very end of 299. So first appearance of Venom. And number four on my list is Love and Rockets. This is another really uh, iconic book from the 80s. Um, this is from 1982. And it's sort of like a book that's associated with the underground uh, comics scene. Um, it dealt with a lot of like different, uh, like stuff that we'd consider woke nowadays, <laughs> actually. Um, and it just dealt with a lot of like the subculture that was happening. Um, and uh, yeah, it's really hard to get this book. It's a hard one to get in high grade as well because of the black, um, but it's one that is uh, been homaged as well. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy homaged it when they did their sort of police lineup kind of thing. Um, and this is just a really cool book. Um, you know, it's always cool when you get those books that are sort of the counterculture. Um, and whether you agree with that counterculture or not, that's not the point, it's more just for the historical significance of it. So this is Love and Rockets number one from 1982. And another major book. Uh, this is, and we're getting to the big pricey ones now. Uh, this is Raphael number one. And it's the first uh, you know, solo story with Raphael, first title for him. It's a one-shot. They did one-shot for pretty much all the characters. That's Raphael there. <laughs> um, and it's um, just a great one because it's also the first appearance of Casey Jones, who's a really cool character. I usually associate him with a hockey stick. He kind of beats up people with a hockey stick. Um, and you get him on the back. And something that somebody told me that I didn't notice until they pointed it out to me is when he's jumping down onto these bad guys down here, uh, he's using an umbrella to kind of slow his fall. <laughs> I thought that was really interesting. And he's got his iconic hockey stick with him there too. So just a really cool cover. And um, this one is in a 9.8. That's why it's such an expensive book. Uh, so this is the first appearance of Casey Jones in a 9.8, very nice book. Uh, actually, I had another copy of it, which was a raw copy, and I upgraded to that. And I, they, they accepted the trade, <laughs> uh, and then some, you know, some extra money involved. Um, so yeah, so it was a cool one to get, though. Uh, so this is uh, the next book on my list, number two, 
this is a really big book. This is um, Albedo number two, very rare book. Um, there's only like less than 300 of these on the census. Um, it's hard to get in high grade again because of that black cover. You can see like, um, you can see it, the, like the spine ticks, how they show <laughs> really easily. So uh, it's one of those annoying covers for that, uh, you know, high, hard to get in high grade kind of books. Um, so this one is uh, got white pages though. Uh, this is from 1984. It's the first appearance of Yasagi Ojimbo. Just a cool character. Um, very cool story, actually. I highly recommend it. Um, it's from uh, Stan Sakai. And just a great, great comic. Great series. Um, I'll show you the back, too. <laughs> so this is a cool book. Um, so yeah, so that's Albedo, number two from 1984. And actually, this book is not as rare, but way more valuable. Uh, number one on my list is probably my big one of the biggest books in my collection actually um and it is teenage moon ninja turtles number one so this is like possibly one of my top five books in my collection uh it's reasonably high grade it's an 8.5 and it's by by kevin eastman and uh, layered uh and uh just a great book um Peter Laird, uh, yeah, from 1984, it's the first appearance and origin of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and it's a first print. That's why it's one of the biggest books in my collection. Even second prints and third prints are fairly pricey for this book. One of the ways that you can tell if you have a first print or second print is um, the first prints will have much more uh, lined, it'll be much more liney, and also um, in the T, this is a trick that I always use, I look at the T, and if you see like just a little bit of blood, <laughs> then it's a first print. Uh, the second print doesn't have that, strangely. So, uh, yeah, that's, and it's a wraparound cover too. So it's a very cool one. Another one to hurt, it hard to get in high grade just because of the black. Um, you know, all the spine ticks will show. And not many people really saved this book. Uh, it was only a phenomena um, much later. And it was low print run. I think they only printed, I think it was like two to three thousand of these. And there's about um, 500 or so on the census. It's it's a pretty rare book. Um, so yeah, so definitely one of the grails of the Copper Age. So that's it. That are my those are my top 10 uh, in my collection. There was a few that I probably could have switched out at the lower numbers, but I wanted to show the Smurfs. <laughs> I had to show the Smurfs. Um, so what would be your iconic 80s comics, and what would be maybe possibly your top 10? 80s comics in your collection, Copper Age comics. Uh, if you want to do a video, you know, uh, for the Co Friday Comic Challenge, all you have to do is use the hashtag Friday Comic Challenge and hashtag 80s cover, <laughs> which will be interesting because we'll be competing with all the, the music from the 80s as well, which will be fun. Uh, so yeah, so 80s cover and hashtag uh, Friday Comic Challenge and also include an at to Comic Collector Geek, and then I'll get a notification. <laughs> so I'll get to see your video. So thanks again for watching, and bye for now.